stop, do not buy an adventure boat until you've seen this video. What's the price? Tell them the price, Dan. That's my most, my number one complaint on this channel is not telling you guys the price. So it is in the description down below. I'm hearing you. I'm a one man band. I'm a little bit slow on the uptake. So just bear with me there. Um, I believe there is a segment of you out there who've had your 22 to 28 foot adventure style boats. You understand that boating is your thing. You enjoy it and you're out doing it on the weekends and you've committed to it. But now you're ready for more space. Maybe you wanna do some overnighting. You might have kids and see some value and doing that whole family together thing. Well, today I'm on a modern day sports cruiser, a boat that will do all that for you, but it's not so big that it's gonna take up a bigger marina berth and it still has the ability to put in the rack and stack. So you're not going crazy on the size, but you are going crazy on the features. This is the Flipper 900 ST. You're watching Dan's Boat Life. My name's Dan Jones. Um, this is the walkthrough video. We will be doing a detailed test drive where we go out in some waves. I'll link to that at the very end of this demonstration. So walkthrough starting right now out the back of the boat. It's the middle of winter. So it was actually the coldest start of the year this morning. It was quite nippy. And you know, you can always tell it's winter because I got shoes on, but of a layout like what we have on this uh, flipper, which you're gonna see in a second when I go through the cockpit, means it's an all weather boat, particularly for a climate like Sydney and basically for any climate because we've got wraparound glass. And just starting at the back of the boat here, there's a few things going on because I'm gonna, so I'm gonna try and demonstrate as much as possible. Hopefully you can see this little white thing just here. That is actually, for an optional stern anchor. Now, a lot of the Scandos do that. I've been told apparently the Finnish are not Scandinavian. I, I didn't even realize that. I apologize to anyone Finnish who's watching. So the Finnish who are just Finnish, um, but they, it's really popular up there is what I'm saying because they go nose in in a lot of different scenarios, but where it's suitable for us in Australia is going nose up on the beach. And with outboards, you can do that. And I'll demonstrate or I'll explain how that's possible on this flipper. So you've got uh, the swim platform here, that's bolt-on extendable. Then you get onto the main part of the hull just here. This particular boat has got teak decks. And first things first, you've got opening little locker here. So that's great for you know all your swimming uh, bits and pieces can go in there, flippers, fins, all that sort of stuff. We've got shore power, looks like just here, nice stainless steel cap. And then I've got a flagpole holder just here and my first of my stainless steel cleats out the back. And that's gonna be within easy reach if you're standing on the dock as well. Um, we do have a, rub around, a, a wrap around rubber rail is what I was trying to say. So that wraps around to here. The only thing that's not protected is actually this extended swim platform back here. So you could actually still wallop that uh, if you had a little had a little boo boo, so we've got the twin two two five horsepower Mercs, um, great motors for this hull. You can go up to twin three hundreds. I'm going to say right now, after spending three hours driving this boat, um, unless you are going for ridiculous unnecessary speeds, actually just get these motors because the fuel flow is really good. Cruising around at fifty liters an hour, speed return 25, 27 knots, totally doable. And uh, that seems logical for what I believe is gonna be the type of person that's gonna find this boat appealing um, as maybe the next stepping stone in, in, in your boat life. So here we are on the starboard uh, swim platform. Again, we've got this extendable one here. This is where the swim ladder is. So we've got a telescopic four-step swim ladder that just deploys from out there. And what you just saw me climb across is actually, um, a multifunctional unit because this boat's just sub 30 feet. They are doing a lot of very clever things with the design here. So yes, that is a passageway from port to starboard. It is also the base of the sun lounge and it also electrically hinges up uh, to make clearance for the engines when you want to trim them out of the water. So that's what's 
is what was just going on over there. Uh, just come down here and have a look at this mic. So on the starboard side, we have another same size as on the port, so good for flippers and all that sort of stuff. And then we have the fuel filler just here. There's 360 litres of petrol in the fuel tank, and we'll have a look at that when we get down below. And then we've got our hot and cold, because we do have, don't get too close there with the camera, just try and um, stay a little, little bit out so everyone can see. Um, and, oh yeah, yeah, no worries. Um, hot and cold uh, as you enter, so shower, swim ladder, all pretty logical. Next thing, you come down, you enter, and you go down quite a, a deep step. So whilst there isn't a gate just here, um, if you look at my legs, my knee is just there. So there's, there's no way a dog or a little child is going to accidentally exit the boat. So I, I don't see that as a danger, not having the gate is what I'm trying to explain there because the height here going down to the main floor there is, is, is pretty substantial. Starboard cleat just here, and then we go forward on both starboard and port. We'll do that in a second. Now, see that? We'll get back to it, because you'll be amazed at the amount of accommodation we have on what is only a 30-foot boat. So when you enter the middle of the boat, you have your fender storage, logical place, and also see the clever design of step, step. So if you've got short legs like me, you still can quite easily get up. It's actually not too great, but it's just not nice to see. And then you've got these stainless steel grab handles, which probably also give a little bit of structural support to uh, the roof as well. And then you enter the heart of the boat. It's the feeling you get on this boat. Um, it's that next level. It is that made uh, like the boats made in, Swe in Sweden that you've seen on my channel, it's the same sort of quality. I've seen all sorts of brands that were built in Finland, built in Denmark and built in Sweden. They give you this feeling with the great timbers, the high quality fiberglass, all the fixtures and fittings, they are on their own level. So that's the, that's the impression you're gonna get when you, when you get on board. Um, and let's just have a little seat down. So. Just get all this in shot, Mike. So this is what I'm thinking about. Say you have had that commuter boat. Um, you know how much space you have internally in that commuter boat, and it's amazing. It's a really good experience. It's been lots of fun, and it's proven to you that you like boating, but you, you're a bit of a lunch -a lot You're more of a lunch -a lot than, say, going offshore hunting whales with a camera, not, you know, you, you know what I mean. Um, so this sort of layout might be more appealing to you because you want to bring out some mates, you want to bring out kids, you might have a dog, all that sort of stuff. And that's why I'm making the argument that some of you who have been introduced to the boat life through an awesome adventure boat, but you've realized you don't go offshore that all that much, and you're looking for something more of a middle ground, um, but not gonna take up too much space. That's why I think this could be really worth your while considering. Because look at me now, if I was in a group of four, we're gonna have bucket loads of space. A group of eight, it's still gonna be possible. And I think the optimum number to be happy is probably a group of six, to be fair, because you're gonna have people moving around. You might have someone here at the mini bar, which will, you do that, that pops up and check that out. So, you know, I've got a diesel powered two burner, little uh, hot plate just there. I've got um, hot and cold sink just here. I've got a little little bit of prep space just here. I'll put that down because we are rocking around and that was just annoying me. Um, and really, really nice timber trims all the way around. And then let's just go through, look at these. Look at the fiddles, look at the timber fiddles just there. The nice stainless latches. Okay, so that's probably good for a bin in there, I reckon. And again, look at that timber. That looks like teak to me, very nice. And one, two, three drawers, all equally sized and soft close, like so. So that's pretty cool. So that's all very functional. Where's your refrigeration? It's just on the opposite side. So you have a 12 volt Dometic. That's just a cold drawer just there. And then we have, so you put your tinnies in there and you can have your stand up bottles here because you also have your freezer 
drawer just there. So you can have some ice in that one. I think when you get on board, you're going to have um, to distribute all the people's stuff. So I would say people are going to get on board with bags. I'd say take your shoes off. You could put your shoes in this locker under here because that's quite deep. So they can all be in the one place, all your shoes and your thongs. Then uh, girls are going to have handbags and phones and that sort of thing. There's a good place for all that. So it's within easy reach. So they're not having to go too far forward. Um, whoever's at the helm is also going to have phones while it's bits and pieces. And we've got two drawers for that as well. And then all the, because it's a cabin boat, all of your duffel bags with all your extra stuff with your, your beach towels and those sorts of things can just go on the bed downstairs. Um, where does the safety gear go, you ask? So I'm not gonna open this right now, but underneath there is a huge little area, we'll cut to that in some B-roll, which actually holds all your safety gear. It's specifically designed for it. So you can have a safety grab bag and life jackets just under here. So easy to access, and in a good location and underneath it there's actually access to all your technical systems as well so that's kind of cool so this table check this out we've got drink holders one two three just here we have a grab handle um, you can actually sit at this table and have a proper lunch for a few people and then you if you are not preparing food on your own cooker and say you've just gone to the cafe and ordered uh, I don't know, a seafood platter. You could chuck the seafood platter there and then everyone could sit around and serve themselves up and eat in comfort here. But it also operates electrically up and down. I'm not gonna do the whole thing, but you get the idea and turns into a big bed. So imagine middle of winter, like now, the sun's nice, but the wind is not. What a great place to relax during the day, read a book and have a good time. Um, now this also, operates i think you might need to pull it up i did do this okay i'll cut to some b-roll this lays flat to create a sun lounge that goes aft so that's perfect for summer and also a little bit of winter vibes now before we go through um just check out some of the some of the diamond stitching and the finishing we've got over the roof here we've got some down lights above and then we've also got down lights four of them on either side on this lovely teak strip just here which just finishes the boat quite nicely um, and i'll get to the helm in one second because i just want to show you some multi-function so we've got our l shape here that can be set up in a bed that's awesome but when you're driving that's all you have to do it's as simple as that good for two people there i am with my short legs so if you had really long legs, you might be sort of like that, but it's not the end of the world. And then someone can sit here and put their foot up on those stairs. And those are the stairs that go forward. And we'll do that in a second. Grab handle just here. And then neat little storage area for phones, which have already been charged. I have seen a few charge points around the place. So I'll point them out when I notice them again. Now let's focus at the helm. Really enjoyable boat to drive, very high quality hull and um, a nice middle ground from an adventure boat to a classic sports cruiser. So if you've driven an old Sea Ray, for example, where you're just belting along and trying to do 32 knots and just using up all the fuel in the world doing it, this thing just sits happily at 30 knots and she'll do 40 knots just with these motors or close to, um, and would probably be a 50 knot boat if you had the twin 300. So it's effortless and it's solid as the hull felt great you can feel a hull when you come off the back of a wave and what it does to you and the experience we just had was comfortable so that just tells me um, if i wanted to blast the thing up to pitwater for the weekend and just uh, stay on station for there for a couple of days or visit friends or do whatever you can and stay on the boat and then you can do your typical sports cruiser thing Sydney Harbour or wherever you may be, because I know a lot of you are watching from Majorca and Miami. Hello to you. So to start your day, you've got your engine battery switches at the helm. Clever location. Just give me the camera. I just want to show everyone that. Um, clever location right there. I love seeing that sort of thing. Super handy 
and logical, and you can see all your fuses there. You've got a manual fire extinguisher. You then have your safety. I don't know why you would wear that because nobody is going to be falling away from that helm, but it is there. I'll give you the camera back there, Mike. And then the other thing I pointed out in the test drive, the start keys are here. I like that position because a lot of boats put them over here, just here on the port side. Can you see there? And that's, if you've got long legs, you're going to bang them and you might accidentally turn the engines off. So having them over here and out of the way is a, a sensible design. And then having the throttle set back from the wheel, nice and comfortable for, you know, manual driving with both throttles, or you could do your single lever, rest your hand there, go through the waves, operate the boat with ease and see how we have our little armrest just here, which has been done very, very nicely. So just pointing out quickly what we have, this boat's got the Bennett trim tab, so they're manually operated. You've got the active trim for the motors, manual Bennett trim tabs. You have the option to go to uh, zip wakes if you choose. You've got the side power thruster just here. You've got your windlass operation here. You can fit a chain counter to that. We've got a single Simrad display. I would say you can probably get two smaller displays on this if you chose, because there might just be enough room. I don't know, but I would say there probably is. That's perfect for holding a phone just there we've got all our boat systems including including the buttons to operate the lift up for the uh, protection of the motor um, we've got a little bit of storage just here and your phone charging is just forward here so we've got contactless charging just in there and out of the sun which is probably a good idea now looking forward i've got the cover on at the moment we have the compass and then we've got some window demisters just here a little bit of strengthening and let's actually do this now um, heading to the bow is as simple as good old traditional sports cruiser vibe so straight up through this teak steps onto the bow now you can go up the side so port and starboard because we do have those stainless steel grab rails we'll look at those in a second there is a sun lounge which goes right across the bow here. I took it off for the test drive, so I'll have to cut to some shots for that. But look at the stainless steel fittings just here. So that's, that's good quality stuff. Um, that's gonna last a long time. I like that it's flush mounted. It's just stylish. We can see a couple of windows just here, and it goes like that in terms of the, the design of the decks just there. Our ticks running forward, good solid grab rail. And then we have chain to rope on the windlass, just up here, small bow roller. It all seemed to work pretty well. Just excuse the dirt, she's been in the rack and stack, but it's a Lumar windlass just there. And it was a stainless steel anchor. So coming back, we got two windscreen wipers, one on each side that does look like mild steel. So it is what it is. And then we got stainless across the top here. I've got my, I'm just gonna do this so you could see. I've got my water in just there. So it's 100 litres of water capacity on this boat. And then making your way forward and aft, it's doable, but it's not grandma doable. So if you're fit and healthy, this is fine. You've got plenty to hold on to. You just work out a way that works for you and you can do it. But judging by what we just discovered about the maneuverability of this boat, you shouldn't need to transit up and down here too much because you can side slip the boat in towards the dock. You can reverse it very confidently in a straight line and she spins around using transverse thrust. It really is a boat that um, it's gonna do what you tell it to when you maneuver it correctly. So you shouldn't need to be running up the sides because you can have a line ready to go, another one from the midships cleat and secure the thing quite happily. Uh, the sunroof, I haven't tested that. So we'll have to do that at some point um, because uh, I haven't used it yet. I would like to do that. A couple more grab rails here, and the roof is quite stylish. I did notice a little bit of movement going through some of the big waves, so that was something, but um, no, no stress fractures or crazy or anything. I assume they probably just built this to allow movement, just like you would see on an airplane wing going through turbulence, because sometimes when you don't have flex, you get brakes. So I'd say that's probably been designed into it. Nice, really fancy all around white light for the anchor light. I've not actually seen a housing like that. Many little details is what I'm noting on the flipper. It's just, they've gone the extra mile in terms of quality. So that's, that's really cool to see. I think we've covered everything. Let's go downstairs and have a look at the cabin. Okay, guys, 
I bet you didn't think I was going to come to the back of the boat because 30 feet, we actually have a second cabin. So like so, that seems to be held in with a magnet. Check this out. I'm going to go down. I'll just pop down. I can actually step in the middle. There's a little footwell just here. And how awesome is this? What a surprise, what a lovely surprise. I've got a window going out the back. I have another window here. I've got a little vent here. So that's going to, uh, I don't know, air conditioning or heater option. I've got two down lights just here. And then if I take my shoes off, I can actually put that infill right in the middle and I've got a double bed. Light switch just at the door there and 12 volt for uh, charging your phone. This is a storage area or a fantastic Kitty's cabin. You could even give this to another adult couple and they're not going to complain. I'm, I'm quite impressed. A couple little tiny little lights just as you enter as well. Okay, so we've closed the roof. I just want to point out it's beautifully felt finished on the inside, obviously material exterior. So uh, the feeling of quality is high. Um, make sure when you're closing this roof that you have the windscreen closed because that could be an issue. And then to open it, you want to unlock this little guy here, I think I've done that correctly. Um, and then you come over to here and you just press roof open. And it's as simple as that. So that's super nice. Um, obviously you lose your visibility a little bit when you're driving with the roof closed. And you, you do have those demisters if it's a you know humid kind of day and you're driving uh, in the rain and you need the roof closed. So come on down. Uh, we have just the sliding companion way there. You just got the little safety there so it doesn't close. Stainless and you get welcome into this little foyer. So come in, Mike, and let's have a bit of a look. First things first, headroom's great for me, but I'm 5'7". So, <laughs> so if you were 5'8", you'd be fine. Any taller, you're gonna be hitting your head. So just pay attention to that. It's fine for a night and doing, you know, going to the toilet, all that sort of stuff. But if you're really tall, um, yes, you're gonna hit your head. Jacket storage, some shelves, access behind the helm. Um, beautifully finished timber work. This is the theme as we make our way through here. Nice mirror. You can sit down and check yourself out before you go out for the day. You can store your shoes underneath here. We also have a little bit more storage underneath that step and then that gets access, gives you access to some seacocks. Um, we've got a grab handle just here and then we go into the head. So I'm gonna come in and check this out. It's a really high quality setup in here. So um, heaps of space. The headroom's pretty good from a seated position. So ladies, don't worry. And look at my legs. I'm sitting where the loo would be. You, you, even if the big blokes sitting in here, on, if you were sitting on the loo, it wouldn't be a problem. Standing, yeah, not so much. So that's you know, just going to be something you've got to factor in. Um, you've got excellent amount of storage for those like Heli Hansen toiletry style bags. So two of you overnight could put your toiletries bags in there. You can put a, a, a toilet roll just there because that's going to be dry and out of the way. And then some of your extra stuff. Oh no, toilet roll just go right there. Not a problem. Um, extra toiletries can go in there. Proper decent sink, hot and cold. It even has its own fancy little pull out shower. 240 just here. Demister just there or, or ventilation. We've got a um, towel rack just there, a couple of down lights and an opening porthole with privacy blind on the port side. And just look at this beautiful timber finish. This is, this is good stuff. Holding tank uh, gauge just there as well. Great. Really like this head. So that's, that's going to impress. So you go out this way, Mike. I'm going to go into the master cabin now, which is also quite impressive. So you can open it up like this, I hope you can see there, and you've got more storage, maybe for safety gear, but think about this, if you were using the boat for an overnight adventure, you're gonna have your duffel bags, you're gonna pull out your jackets and your t-shirts and that sort of thing, put them uh, you know, in the locker, and then you might actually roll your empty bags up and put them down here, and you might also have, say, a sleeping bag or extra blankets if it did get cold, I would probably store them underneath here because you're not always going to get to them. Light switch is just on the side here. You do have a little privacy blanket here if you were wanting to come down for a nap in the daytime and just get out of the sun. I think that's a good idea. 
But then you get into just, hopefully you can get some perspective. It's quite a large bed. We've got this beautiful window on either side. So you would have nice views looking out of a morning. And then we have our two overhead, uh, one hatch, one skylight. I've got them closed because the sun's a bit bright. And then this, the timber kind of uh, frames the bed a little bit. I suppose the idea is to sleep like this because then you've got the most space, but you might even consider sleeping like this as well because look at me now, like you still do have quite a bit of usable space. Um, you both have storage on either sides for your phones and you have these little bits of material here to black out uh, these windows if you really want to have a proper sleep. So that's quite clever as well. Um, that's the windows up here I'm talking about. A couple of drink holders in the cabin. We've got stereo control, we've got USB, we've got um, 240, Fusion as well. I did look underneath me just here. We have access into the bow thruster, so nothing is hidden from us on this boat. And then, let's just have a look in here. Yeah, another little storage spot and a shelf just here. You could probably put a laptop in there as well. I'm, for 30 feet, just remember, we're only on a 30 foot boat. There's so much going on here. It's, it really is quite impressive. Okay, guys, uh, that was a lot of fun. I think this is uh, a boat you really need to take seriously if you love the day boat modern sports cruiser lifestyle and you see yourself getting more value from doing essentially what we're doing right now. Um, Patreon, I'm taking it seriously. I'm now going to finally start filming some Patreon only content. So I will get into a little bit more detail, go underneath some of the hatches. Um, I know some of you guys are really keen on that and you're talking and regularly messaging me about comparing boats. I'm gonna start merging some of those conversations over to Patreon. It's just getting a little bit too much for me to manage on all the social sites. And I figure we gotta head in that direction. So get on there and support me. Um, if you like this content, please subscribe. Um, please give it a like, share it with your mates. It means the world to me. If you like having me, I love having you as well. So um, guys, if you wanna see the test drive, that is a separate video. Click on the link coming up on the screen right now.